Let us imagine you are looking for a new means of transport. Well, in my opinion, you can either buy your own car and be responsible for it, such as keeping it up to date, changing the oil, replacing the tires, and so on. Because the car is yours, it is your total obligation to maintain it running. You may, however, rent a car as an option. This implies you may borrow an automobile for a monthly payment and use it for anything you need. You simply pay the owner the rent for using the car and you don't have to worry about any troubles. Depending on the various aspects in your life, you would have to decide which option best meets your needs and is the wisest choice. For example, you may not have enough money to purchase a new car outright, or you may simply be too busy to take care of the upkeep. If you think about it, the differences between a coin and a token are pretty much the same. Hello everyone, it is Clever Money, and today we are going to talk about the differences between crypto coins and tokens, as well as some examples. So stay tuned till the end, and let's get started. In our car analogy, a coin utilizes its own blockchain to keep track of all of the data, which is equivalent to owning the car. When it comes to a token, however, you are simply paying the rent to use someone else's coin's blockchain as your infrastructure. When creating a token, you don't have to worry about creating the blockchain, writing the entire code, or figuring out how it should be validated. Rather, you simply generate the token, which then runs on the blockchain. Ethereum is the finest illustration for this video. Ethereum is a cryptocurrency with its own blockchain that holds value and validates transactions. The Ethereum team has been working tirelessly over the last few years to improve the entire system, including updating its functionality and correcting vulnerabilities. An Ethereum token also known as an ERC-20 token, is a digital asset that leverages the Ethereum blockchain as its backbone and infrastructure. Basic Attention Token, for example, is an ERC-20 token based on the Ethereum network. The team determined that they were not large enough to build their own mainframe, but they did want to develop a system where people could easily reward the creators they follow. Without getting into too much detail, the Basic Attention Token team can concentrate on producing a fantastic product in the form of the Brave Browser, a web browser that automatically replaces adverts on a website with advertisements that pay the author with Brave. The Brave team could rely on Ethereum's network for safety and stability while focusing on their own product by developing a token. Also, if a group of developers decides that their project is growing quickly enough, they can switch from a token to a coin. When we think of Crypto.com, we should remember that they built their own mainnet, which is a fancy way of saying that they launched their own coin that is now validating their own transactions. They used to have a token, but it became so popular that they decided to split out and develop their own network. So here's the deal. You can't convert a token directly into a coin. Instead, you can create a coin that functions similarly to the token and then create a bridge that allows users to exchange their old tokens for the new coins. Some coins, such as Leo, are tokens on numerous networks in some situations. Leo, for example, is a member of the Ethereum, Binance, Smart Chain, and Hive networks. Another thing to keep in mind is that some coins are represented on other networks as tokens. You can think of it like this. If you buy a gold stock, you own the stock, but it only serves as a representation of the gold. You can cash out that stock at any time for a piece of gold. So, it is basically gold, at least in terms of trade. While it is a simplified form, there are several different types of tokens that we can use to categorize the purpose of each token. Let me give you a couple examples so you can see what I'm talking about if you haven't already. So platform tokens are ranked first. Platform tokens are established to support a blockchain-based decentralized application. Uniswap, for example, is a decentralized application that allows users to exchange Ethereum tokens 
for Ethereum tokens. They also have their own currency, the Uniswap token, despite being a decentralized app. This token is provided to anyone who invests in their platform with the premise that token holders will be able to vote on future changes and maybe even earn a portion of the profits from trading. The second item on the list is security tokens. The purpose of security tokens is to indicate ownership of another asset. For instance, if you wanted to buy gold but did not want to keep it, someone could design a token that is linked to the price of gold. So instead of owning the gold, you possess a representation of it, which is supposedly safer because hacking an Ethereum token is far more difficult than breaking into someone's home. The tough element is that it should be backed up by an actual asset. For instance, I may develop a gold token and urge you to invest in it despite the fact that I do not own any gold. On number 3, we have transactional tokens. Transactional tokens are used to send money quickly and easily. If we consider the XDAI coin, it is now fixed to the US dollar, making it simple for individuals to pay for things like coffee or a shirt at a local store. You can use it in the same way as cash, but the costs are far lower. Utility tokens are on number 4. As a result, utility tokens are tokens with a monetary value associated with their ownership. Basic attention token, for example, is an Ethereum token that can be used to advertise on Brave. To put it another way, if I wanted to promote this YouTube channel on the Brave web browser, I could easily do so using my basic attention token. To put it another way, utility tokens can actually do anything, whereas security tokens cannot. You can just buy and hold them, but a utility token can be utilized for a business purpose. Finally, we have governance tokens. With governance tokens, token holders can vote on certain issues using governance tokens. For example, in a future iteration of the Uniswap market, Uniswap may be a governance token. Token holders could choose to increase the Uniswap trade charge from 0.3% to 0.6%, and anybody owning a token could vote on the change. The winner is determined by the decision that receives the most votes. As a result, having more tokens give you more voting power. Obviously, there is a compelling motivation to possess more tokens. By doing so, you may exert greater control over the platform. Now that you have learned about the many types of tokens, you should be able to see why we need them and how some of them work. If you liked today's video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and turn on our notifications so you don't miss anything. That'll do it for today, and I'll see you again soon.